First panelist, she's Peng Haiying. She's the CEO of Children's Cancer Foundation and she has been in social work for many years and managing cases on child protection, family violence, and addictions. So, one interesting story about Haiying is that her first experience with a volunteer manager was when she was in secondary school and she was actually doing spring cleaning for an elderly home when a volunteer accidentally threw away a Van Houten chocolate box. You know how, and, and, and it actually consisted of the elderly's uh, entire life savings. All the money were in. Yeah, so, but she actually witnessed how the volunteer manager calmly handled the situation. And then, interestingly, she later recruited this volunteer manager when she worked in the FSC. Amazing. So we became colleagues 14 years later. <laughs> uh, and she actually remembered, but that's a good thing. So the next we have uh, Mr. Chan Wei Peng, who is a senior social work lecturer at SUSS. You're on home ground, right? <laughs> so before joining SUSS, he had been in, in NCSS for many years. He's actually he, told, he tells us he's very happy to be part of an event that is actually organized by both his prior and his current employer. <laughs> All right. Finally, we have Christian Chow, who is the CEO of Care Corner. He describes himself as an OD practitioner in leaders' clothing with experiences in public, private and people sectors. He enjoys early morning runs and needs to sleep by 11 p.m. Correct. Really? What would happen to you? I'll be very unhappy, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's give a warm welcome to our panel. So each of these panelists actually comes with a unique perspective to better understand how we can invest in the growth of a volunteer manager. But they have suggested that actually they may not be the only experts in this field. They are actually among their peers and quite a number of you could be in this line for a long time as well. So, um, so they are saying that, okay, so instead of a Q&A session later, maybe we can have an informal cross-sharing at the, at the end, especially since it's such a small group. Welcome. Do come in and join us. Oh, yeah. 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 
Yeah, it was. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. Sorry. Right. Yeah, we just introduced the panelist earlier. Yeah. Mm. Forgot to use this. <laughs> so, yeah. So what we do. Uh, you're, okay, you all know this topic is developing and equipping the volunteer manager. So we'll go through the like, you know, like the why. Why do we have to equip them, and the what and what capabilities are there, and and how how can we build these capabilities? So maybe the first question we ask, of course, is what makes a professional volunteer manager? So maybe we'll get our but our panelists weeping, ping to talk about this. Uh, the question is, what makes a volunteer professional. manager profesh a professional? Mm. Uh, well, I, I, th I think in Singapore, a uh, volunteer manager is a growing profession, in a sense. Um, and we can look at it from a different criteria, right? So whether, when, 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 when we say at a career as a profession, usually there are a few characteristics. One is, is go through a structured training with a set of competency uh, and there are, there's an ecosystem in place to help them develop as a career uh, and also eventually some form of policy or legislation to uh, provide the authority right, uh, of that profession. So if you look at volunteer manager, I think uh, we, are, we have done quite a lot in recent years. Uh, NCSS has developed a set of uh, competency uh, and a learning development roadmap, which maps out very clearly in terms of career pathway for volunteer managers. I think all this is putting very good foundation in place. What next, perhaps, is how the society value this profession. Because at the end of the day, uh, a profession becomes a profession when the society values it. So that is something which will have to take time as we evolve. But having said that, uh, that's about professionalizing something. But I think individually, um, volunteer managers can also um, adhere to a set of code of conduct which demonstrate professionalism. For example, equipping themselves with uh, necessary skills and knowledge, right? By going to training, refreshing their knowledge, and also uh, upholding certain standards in terms of how they work with volunteers, particularly uh, adhering to ethical standards, for example. I think those, those are very important things to continue to build trust with the different stakeholders. Mm. I think that, that will be my perspective. Thank you. But actually then, uh, first maybe we should also ask this question, why is it, uh, why is investing in volunteer management useful for the organisation? Uh, maybe we can get Hai Ying. Uh, can hear me, right? So, okay, so maybe I share from my organization point of view. Uh, I hear some of you introduce yourself just now, like Jasleen, you do donor relations, you do the whole scope, right? Then Kelvin is also with the Copcoms. So, um, so very similarly, uh, um, in CCF, we don't call it volunteer management, we call it community engagement. So, so we actually look at it from a very different perspective. So uh, the scope of a volunteer manager is actually elevated and also expanded yeah, to include uh, not only tactical uh, recruitment of volunteers, but also very, very strategic engagement of our corporate and um, individual volunteers. So why, why we want to do that? We want to do that is because um, when we get in that relationships, we want to cultivate that relationships into longer term meaningful relationships. So a lot of, let's say, individuals or corporates, they may not want to you know, give money first. So if they do not want to give money, the VM will actually be that first point of contact for them, right? So then for corporates or for stakeholders like that, how do we enhance that CCF experience for them? Yeah. So basically we look at it from a very different um, strategically point of view for cultivating um, uh, stakeholders and also cultivating relationships. And it's where then we hope to eventually for them to become champions and advocates of CCF in their own networks. So this is how we see VM. So, so in CCF, we don't actually call VM VM, we call it community engagement. And community engagement falls under, we, uh, the team works very, very closely with FR fundraising and also uh, 
and also comms. We, or we have mark comms, we don't have cop comms. So basically, how we look at it is because, um, let's say, if I say, you know, cultivating partnerships, right, then the FR team will come and tell me, but I'm the one, you know, cultivating partnerships, so I'm the one getting in new donors. So, so, so they, then they turf guard, right? So what should we do? But we actually uh, don't do that in CCL. We want to encourage the cross-department um, collaboration. So we actually make them share common KPIs. That means um, in a year, so, so basically, just, just in summary, in a year, how many new partners do we get in? How many partners do we retain? What is that, you know, holistic uh, voluntary experience that we are giving to our volunteers? So in CCF, in a nutshell, the scope of VM is actually first, of course, creating that holistic voluntary experience for everyone. Then secondly, also looking at internal stakeholders. So the team actually works very closely with our direct services teams, asking our social workers what services or what kind of volunteers you know, do you need to help you run your direct services, to help you run your programs for our children and family. So that's internal stakeholders. The third area will be, of course, the external engagement with the partners and the stakeholders, and then cultivating that relationships. So that's why if we look at it, um, I, I think many of you, when you go back to your organization, um, in your you know, respective organization, sometimes, or many times, VM is actually, it takes a step back from fundraising and you know, social work, right? So, so if you look at it the other way, cultivating relationships and then building that whole community uh, engagement and stakeholders, that actually takes VM to a much elevated and also wider breadth and depth. Yeah, so something for all of you to consider. Um, yeah, so actually, um, in the uh, so I'm from Care Corner. Um, actually, the the things that Haiyan just shared um, isn't too different from uh, Care Corner. So in in Care Corner, we have a, a function called uh, volunteer and community engagement. So we use the same term, community engagement. Um, maybe just to share a bit of the context, right? So because it gives a bit of flavor as to why we see, why we do the things that we do. So for Care Corner, um, other than uh, looking at our own volunteering needs, so making sure that our own services, uh, you know, are staffed with volunteers, and, and we do have a range of volunteers. Um, I think the ones that we are most proud of are our volunteers that have uh, journeyed with us for many, many years. So we have a, a particular service that we provide. It's a Mandarin hotline service. Um, and we have volunteers that have been with us for 20 years, you know, and, and, and they are trained, right? So to become a trained um, uh, uh, person who will answer the calls, they have to go through 100 hours of training. Uh, and these are Mandarin-speaking speak, individuals. Um, so, it's a, so we have a range of volunteers like that, which we really value um, to, of course, you know, volunteers where they are uh, coming for mini events, like one-off events uh, that support us. So that's one kind of volunteers that we have. But the other uh, areas of uh, um, volunteers that we, we, uh, we look at is really our SG care centers. So for those of you who are familiar with the MCCY SG care centers, we run three of them. Uh, and then the role that they play is, is different, right? Because the role that they play is really to facilitate uh, you know, uh, volunteers uh, being placed or being deployed uh, to other community partners. So that's another role uh, that we, we perform. Then we had another role uh, where we work with Youth Corp Singapore uh, to look at developing uh, youth volunteering. So we are one of two agencies, the other being Shine, uh, that looks at how do we help uh, you know, uh, uh, the development of youth volunteers in Singapore. So there's a range of uh, things that we do under the volunteer and community engagement uh, function. Now, the, the, the thing about, um, I guess, the, the way we look at volunteering um, is that... Uh, uh, and I think it's, it's been repeated a few times this, this morning. Uh, it isn't just about actually resourcing. So we don't see volunteers as just like, oh, you know, these are, um, you know, so-called cheap labor or, you know, these are the extra pair of hands, etc. Um, we really do value them. And I think for us, uh, part of our volunteering philosophy is to make it a transformative experience. Because if they are able to experience volunteering in a way that transforms their own uh, view of the work and the sector, uh, that's something that you know uh, it provides a lot of meaning for our for our for our team. So that that's one thing. The other thing that we look and see is that actually when we do promote volunteering in the community, uh, it is also a way of actually strengthening the the resilience of the community. 
Right? I think that's also I think echoed quite a few times by both speaker and DPM. So I think the work of uh, 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 you know, uh, volunteer management is actually a very important area of work for us. Uh, but this is something that only, I think, over the years, will become a lot clearer. So initially, I mean, to be honest, initially, a lot of it is like, oh, you know, um, you know how, how do we really design the job so that we can allow the, you know, the, 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 the more administrative menial tasks to be done by our volunteers so that our social workers can focus on the higher value ones. I think that is still holds true, but I think we also want to see that actually volunteering in itself and promoting volunteerism actually has a lot of community value, a lot of societal value. So that's, that's the uh, position that we've been taking. Um, and in maybe one last point, um, because we have this uh, very uh, aspirational vision, right? I mean, when I talk to my team members and our colleagues, they say, hey, our vision is uh, very scary because our vision is care to every corner. Um, <laughs> because care corner, <laughs> so care to every corner. Um, but I think behind that vision really is um, a, uh, the, uh, a, a, the philosophy that actually we can't do care to every corner by ourselves. So it's never possible for one en entity or one agency to provide care to every corner. But we want to play a role, whether it's partnering, whether it's through volunteering, whether it's through collaboration, sharing. You know, how do we help bring that care to every corner? Because there's so many of us, actually. Yeah. So I think that, that's really uh, what I'd like to share for now. Yeah. Uh, thanks, uh, Christian. Uh, so, so by the way, maybe I will just add on uh, what Over Touch is also doing. Uh, when I first joined them, uh, my department was known as a PVC, okay, uh, Partnership Volunteer Management and Communication. So now it's known as a Partnership and Volunteer Management. So we have a very diverse uh, function in the sense that um, for the partnership team, they are responsible for doing CSR as well as. Uh, you know, uh, doing fundraising events, whereas uh, VM side, we are looking at more uh, the needs of the services, uh, how do we uh, create volunteering roles, and also offering different platforms for our corporate partners to come in. Yeah, so, so in, a, in a nutshell, um, the structure of the department is very much dependent on the needs uh, of the organization and differs from uh, one to another as well. Uh. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, so since um, Victor shared, I also want to share that. Yeah, so I heard, just now I heard the panelists talk about uh, community engagement and also about uh, community strengthening. So it's about working with the community. And similarly, my organization, Beyond Social Services, we used to, to call our, our department, which is, consists of the fundraising. Uh, back then it was research, but now it's comms. And also um, the volunteer management team. It uh, used to be called the partnership team, but now it's called the mobilizing wider community team. So we're going to more and more of the community building bit. Yeah. Okay, yeah. All right. So we were talking about <laughs> uh, developing uh, volunteer managers. So I'm just like wondering, like, um, yeah, it seems like this role uh, has become bigger and, you know, we have started to call it community engagement and strengthening. But, uh, but if, we, if we had to have uh, volunteer managers to do this job, how can then they be developed to play this strategic role? So, so I, I think when we, I look at the strategic development of uh, you know, volunteering, uh, volunteer man, uh, management, um, maybe for convenience, I think of like three levels. Like the first level is um, how volunteer managers play the role of a facilitator. Right? So they create really positive experiences. So they engage the individual volunteer or groups of volunteer, uh, and they facilitate the entire, I guess, experience, right? all the way to you know, when they're actually doing the volunteering work. And even in our case, um, we even uh, you know, try to encourage the volunteers to reflect on their experience so that they gain that kind of learning and awareness of you know, uh, what just transpired. So that's, I guess, level one. And I think when you look at uh, that particular role, there are a set of capabilities that would naturally come with it, right? You know, facilitation, uh, good interpersonal skills, communication. I think, I think most of us, you know, you, because you are in the, this area of work, uh, you know that these are very core skills that a volunteer manager would need to have. You know, really being able to engage with the individual uh, volunteer. Then I, I would say then the next level uh, would be maybe being a bit more like a broker. And I think again, we heard a lot about this, right? Because the needs of the volunteer or even the corporate providing the volunteers this is this the program needs. You know, what do our beneficiaries need? Again, that sometimes there isn't always that perfect alignment, right? Whether it's in terms of the logistics, you know, the schedule, you know, when they can do this, or even the kind of um, activities they want to do. 
and what is really needed by the beneficiaries. Now, the volunteer manager actually plays also a very important role in trying to find you know, uh, that sweet spot. So it's a lot of negotiating, brokering, uh, and that's a high-level skill because you're not an order taker. You're not just saying, oh, yes, sir, you know, I will make sure I will find some way to engage your volunteers uh, you know, at the expense of the agency. So we don't want that. And I think that's a higher order skill. The third one, which is where I think we are trying to really pursue, is where they are becoming creators. They are actually working with the services team to develop programs and services that, that has the volunteering opportunities as part of the design. So like, I think what was shared again earlier, you know, how do we think about um, using uh, volunteers as a, as a critical ingredient to scale the program? Right? So some programs might need to be redesigned uh, or given a certain need, you know, instead of just taking a pure, let's say, uh, you know, a complete social work lens, you know, how do we look at that particular issue and say, okay, how can the community and volunteers be part of the solution in the entire design? And again, that's a much higher order capability because that means that they need to maybe you know, uh, uh, understand a bit of in about intervention, you know, things like you know, your theory of success and uh, design. Uh, you know, all those are very different skills you know, compared to a level one facilitator type role. So those are maybe just three broad, I guess, levels of capabilities. Uh, some of it can be acquired by attending a workshop, learning the skills, but I think some of it uh, are acquired uh, by being on the job. So for us in Care Corner, we actually are a big believer in rotation. So we do have volunteer managers that actually come from social work background. That means they were social workers, and then they have opted that, hey, I would like to spend a stint as a volunteer manager. And whether they continue there or not, I mean, again, that's a, you know, a discovery process. But it gives an opportunity for our practitioners to actually do volunteer management work. And even if they decide to go back, I, I think they become much better workers, right? Because of the experience, yeah. So that, that's, uh, that's how we are doing it in Care Corner. Is it similar in CTF? Oh, so, so maybe I just share. So Christian mentioned the creator part, right? Um, so, so in CCF, we actually um, we are not looking into survivorship. So a lot of children now, thankfully, recover from cancer, but then they suffer a lot from late um, side effects of treatment. So um, many of them, depending on where the cancer is, um, actually. Um, you know, have cognitive abilities um, very, very much affected. So we actually have this group of survivors whom we are actually doing a social enterprise program with them. So we, they go through training in certain areas and then with the aim to sell a product in the end. So, um, so we actually have this group of volunteers who follow closely with them for the last um, five years. So, um, and they can actually preempt needs. Like for example, we just started this program like five years ago with the aim to just equip this group of survivors with certain skill sets. That's all. Uh, we weren't thinking of anything else. But the volunteers actually came back and said, hey, no, you know, you need to get them to learn how to market their product, you know, how to sell their products, where to sell, platforms to sell. So eventually it became a whole scale, <laughs> you know, a full-fledged program and which, which we actually opened to some of the disability um, um, centres in, in Singapore. So, um, so this is actually one example of how uh, volunteers can actually scale it. And we do have um, caregivers who come back who... Um, many of them, some of them lost their child to cancer, but returned to CCF to say, because I had gone through this experience, I know what it, what it takes, you know, what it means. Let me do something, uh, start a program for a similar caregivers. So, so these are that, you know, that ongoing cycle that, you know, that they don't leave us, but they continue to come back and co-create with us. Yeah, so, so I just want to add on that to Christian's point about the, co uh, the creation part. Yeah. Mm. Uh, perhaps I'll just add on to what uh, Christian Hai mentioned. Just listening to the uh, experience of both organizations, I just felt that it's very important for organization to uh, have a strategic view on the role of volunteers. Uh, uh, so volunteer is no longer just peripheral, helping, you know, augmenting, but it. It, it can be integral in how an organization develop its resources, eventually uh, how you cultivate corporate donors, for example, uh, or it can uh, give you an extra capability which an organization may not have, right, in terms of reaching, caring at different corners. Definitely, you, you need to have trained volunteers. So, the, 
the ability for volunteer managers to develop in the organization is also a function of how volunteer plays a role in the organization. So it got to have a it got to be part of the strategic development plan of an organization. So I think that is that is critical. Lah. Yeah. Otherwise your development may be limited by operational roles. Yeah. So just want to add on to that. So so uh, like I mean uh, based on what they have shared right now, uh, compared to many years when uh, both A and I first started, uh, there were actually limited resources. And we're also very thankful for the that time was uh, SSI. They have come up with some courses. And of course now, uh, you have more uh, workshops or even uh, other form of trainings to equip the volunteer manager. Yeah, so, so at this moment, we are going to pause for a while. So if you all have any questions, uh, you can feel free to, to raise it and then we will direct to the panelists. Yeah. Or even if you have like yeah. a slightly different model, you know, from what we shared, we will actually love to hear it because that's where we can yes. yeah, learn from each other as well. Yeah. In, in fact, within the uh, NCSS or VM network, we also have a group of us coming together to talk about uh, COP, community of practices. Yeah. In, in fact, some of the youngest ones uh, sometimes will post in the chat group and then ask questions, and this is how uh, you know, uh, experienced uh, volunteer managers will give uh, advice, lah. Yeah. Any? Um, I think we spoke earlier about recognizing our volunteers, but maybe just a question about recognizing the VMs then, because it's a session on uh, developing and equipping them. Um, maybe just to share a little bit of experience on your different uh, portfolios, how you all recognize the role of VMs, lah. Especially in some organization where maybe a bit of tension, like in the creative role, VM may want to push for certain things, program side may say, oh yeah, don't make it difficult, lah, right? Um, how do you, especially as leaders, uh, help to play that role? Yeah. Yes, that's nice. um, thanks so much for that question. So basically at CCI, what we do is we involve our VMs um, right from the start. That means in strategic work plan planning. Uh. So every year we have um, three, every quarter we do work plans and then we do budget. So so whenever we come, because they belong to that uh, team of fundraisers, fundraising and copcoms, uh, marcoms. So so basically um, then we, we then say, you know, and together with the programs team, what are the, okay, so, so what do you want to plan? We usually do a three-year plan. So this year was the focus for programs. And then from your programs point of view, from your VM point of view, how, you know, what resources can come in. And then from FR point of view, how many, you know, um, we, how many corporate or how many individual stakeholders that we had already retained who can do this. So what are the skill sets? So we come together to plan. This has to happen earlier. That means once the VM or that person joins the organization, we actually will, during interview process, we usually prep them and say, this is something that you have to be involved in, strategic planning and work plans. You cannot run away from it. It's not just an admin, you know, going to look out for volunteers and calling them up. Um, so, so this is part of your, you know, of your work plans. We also ask them to present to boards. So we have board meetings every quarter. So, so, um, so, so the community engagement is one. You present your work plans, you present your KPIs to the board, and then every end of the year we review that KPIs. So right from the start, if that strategic um, mindset and growth mindset and is very ingrained in that person and in that team then they know that this is part of the organization and how it is a journey and not just a like what Christian and we think said a peripheral part of of you know CCF of the op that doesn't you know that it's just a pair of hands and legs. It is not that. So so that's how we do that. Firstly we, we strategize, involve them in work plans. Secondly how we recognize them, we recognize them like every other a colleague like um, you know like again in CCI we are very very careful not to place too much emphasis on the social work programs because it's ultimately a very social work driven organization so um, so how do we then take care of our corporate um, um, and uh, we don't call them support we used to call them support then they were what do you mean support I support what <laughs> then it was actually quite offensive so so we actually call them corporate corporate functions now so 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 so, so similarly so um, so every year we we we, we, uh, we have a you know get together we have a gala uh, yeah a sort of like a CCF day we recognize both um, for each team uh, we basically uh, share stories of what they had done and then we recognize them uh, 
work accordingly. Um, when we recognize that team, right, they come with their volunteers. So, so if you look at it, uh, mm, so if you look at it, the HR manages our own CCF team members, right? But we look at it in a way, VM is like your HR arm, but it manages its own pool of volunteers. So, so that's how we also wanted. Um, we in CCF we have this sentence called one CCF O N E. I, I think a board director coined it from a soccer, <laughs> a soccer slogan or something. Yeah. So, so basically, but coming back, um, you know, one means even though you know, no matter who you are, you are a volunteer, you are a part of CCF, and we celebrate that together. So that's how we. I'm not sure whether I answered your question. Um. Yeah, I actually, um, I, I feel quite validated because uh, I <laughs> shared um, a number of things that we do very similarly. Yeah. I think uh, I think one is, uh, you know, um, uh, the board is interested or has grown uh, in its interest in how we're doing in our volunteer management. So I remember distinctly last year, um, maybe unlike, uh, you know, um, a CCF uh, that has a regular agenda for volunteer, um, I think for us, I think they, they kind of like left it for a while, but... Last year, they actually did ask, right? And they said, hey, we would like to know, you know, how are things going for our volunteer uh, management work? So we got to present, and I think they were, uh, you know, very uh, uh, pleased with the work that has been done. Uh, and then I was sitting with, actually, um, uh, two of my board members just now, you know, for the, for the day session, uh, including my chairman. And then after hearing some of the presentations, you know, one of the board members said, hey, we should really, you know, give Gary. Gary is our head of... Uh, our head of volunteer and community, hey, we should give Gary more support, you know, we should encourage him, you know, does he need resources? So I think that is, I think to me, that that's the right kind of recognition and support we want, uh, you know, to give our volunteer managers. I think the other thing that uh, we do in Care Corner is that, uh, so Gary, um, he heads our volunteer and community engagement work, he's actually part of the senior management team. So other than uh, raising issues related to, of course, you know, volunteer and community engagement, he's privy to all the other things that we discuss uh, as a senior management team uh, member. So whether we talk about you know, services, uh, uh, issues, uh, he's privy to all those conversations. And of course, he's expect I mean, part of the expectation is that you know, um, because you also you know, do take care of the portfolio of volunteer community engagement, if there's something that we need to know, uh, you know that will provide a better and more whole perspective to what we're trying to address, of course, you know, uh, he, will, he will do that as well. Uh, he also holds another role. So other than being a volunteer and community engagement, he's also our lead for, uh, because we have three key regions that we operate in, and uh, so he's overseeing actually one of the regions as our community integrator. So what that means is that other than the volunteer and community engagement role, he's also uh, responsible for integrating all our services uh, located in the area of Topayo. So that ranges from family services, senior. So he has also a bit of, uh, that's right, service influence. Though not, not direct, but some influence. And that gives, uh, I think, him a bit of that, that um, platform and that legitimacy as a leader uh, you know, within uh, the organization. So I think that's another thing that uh, I think has helped because you know, he has then that, a bit of that lever uh, for some of the issues that we want to address. Yeah. Thanks, Christian. Um, hey, would you like to share anything about what your organization is doing? Me? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, we learn from one another, so it's good for them. Sorry, yeah. specifically for what? Uh, I mean, regarding the support from the yeah, recognition uh, or support from the board. Yeah. Oh, support from the board? Yes. Okay. Um, well, actually, um, my ED is very, very supportive because way long ago, before um, volunteer management became such a hot topic, um, he already appointed a volunteer manager. I was not the first volunteer manager, even though I've been there for <laughs> donkey years. But uh, yeah, because he always believed that, uh, and he always believed that this is just um, the catalyst, like the volunteer manager is that, that key like, enabler. But he always said that everybody in the organization is, has to you know, uh, manage volunteers. Everybody, we, you know, uh, so that eventually we can do some of the core functions of the work and a lot of these. And, and actually, even going forward, we are trying to engage because there's so much work actually on the ground that we want to do. But sometimes we just don't have the bandwidth. I don't know whether you all can relate to that because a lot of our, you, you can call them social workers, we call them community workers. There's so much to do and they just really don't have the bandwidth. And we have started, what we do is that we have started um, 
employing people from the community, like more of like a part-time kind of thing, and we pay them by the hour, we call them community enablers. So we want to see, we say we work with the community and we actually see that they, they also contribute. These community enablers, they started as, we call them local volunteers, but eventually we see that actually we need their help and, and, and to incentivize them, we also pay them because uh, they can go around doing some of this work that actually we can do. So yeah, so and so there's a lot of community development. The community development is is not just within. It starts from like with with the we call it the our members. It also is with our volunteers. Also, of course, it's also with staff. So we are trying to build community. The whole community is the, the wider uh, circle. Yeah. So just to touch on the recognition of the volunteer manager, uh, actually, if, uh, if I'm not mistaken, 5th of November of every year is uh, designated International Volunteer Manager Day. Yeah, so you can use that to appreciate the volunteer manager. Uh, for volunteer, is on the 5th of December, International Volunteer Day. Yeah, so, so that is uh, where we also appreciate uh, volunteers. Uh. Yeah, so this is something just for you to note. Um, just to t add on to uh, what both uh, Hai Ying and Christian have shared regarding the board support is uh, quite important. Uh, even I myself also, uh, thankfully, I just need to present to the board once a year. <laughs> yeah, not on a quarterly basis. <laughs> yeah, to update them about the work that we are doing. And uh, from time to time, I'm also very thankful for my CEO support uh, at our uh, leadership meeting, you will always talk about uh, you know uh, volunteer management and, and uh, encouraging the rest of my colleagues to support the work that I'm doing. Yeah, thanks. Uh, any more questions? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Sorry. Oh, okay. So it's about professionalizing a volunteer manager. Yeah, so I mean, over the years, of course, no NCSS, you no know, have got all the toolkits and all the uh, framework and everything to train people. But I just feel that you no, know, unlike you know, like social worker, counselors, those are really really professionalized. But I think for volunteer manager, there isn't really such you no know, a you no know, certification or whatever you call it. So I feel that maybe that's something that's lacking right now. Yeah, so that's my first observation or question or whatever you call it. The second one is about, okay, so this morning we heard so much about how PPIS, Philo, you know, started to invest in you know, recruiting a volunteer manager and that's you no, know, and, and the rest is history. But uh, Christian, so just now you talk about the volunteer managers which are actually like, you no, know, there are three orders, right? So you have the top one, the strategic planning, thinking type. Then the second one is the broker and the last one is really the facilitator. So I was just like wondering, like, did PPIS or Philos, when they got their first volunteer manager, is that person, that one individual, you know, encompasses all those three you know, skill sets? Because I think that's very important because we're talking about you know, framework, policy, uh, procedures. These skill sets could be very different from the one who is an personal, you know, interpersonal person. Yeah. So I... Um, I don't know about know whether it was CCF or even Care Corner or even Touch. Do you have like just that one person or you have different volunteer managers that have got different skill sets? And the third question is, um, how do... Okay, so we also heard about collaborations. I think externally, yes, collaborations, but internally, the volunteer manager has to also collaborate with the program uh, heads. Yeah. And a lot of time, I want to design roles for the volunteers. It really depends on our programs, what are the needs. Because the volunteer manager cannot say that, hey, I want, I want to recruit volunteers to do all these things. But I recruit them, but then it may not be what the programs need. And then we talk about experience of the volunteers. If I come once, I don't like it, I will forever don't come to your organization anymore. So I, I just want to hear from the rest of you, you know, like, how do you all like, actually, um, anything to share, you know, best practices? Yeah. I think, uh, I think uh, when you say that, it's like you're telling my life. Uh, because uh, I'm from Brahm Center, and uh, I'm the very first official uh, VM which they have employed, uh, or gotten on board uh, last year in December. So I'm still a toddler. So I'm only three months old. So I'm basically still crawling. So uh, when I went through, uh, I, I'm sure all of you here, the experience for volunteer manager is triple or more, more times than me. 
Uh, but I've been a volunteer since I was 19. You see, I've been through my entire life being a manager, uh, volunteer, but never managing volunteers. So when you say things like, uh, you, you, a second question mentioned, uh, is the first volunteer manager, a facilitator, all of that? Because I'm all of that. Because I'm a one-man show. I have to be the facilitator, I have to be the recruiter, I have to be the interviewer, I have to be the negotiator, uh, compliance manager, <laughs> or, or anything else that comes under the, that umbrella, uh, it, it came to me. Uh, because they don't, I mean, we do have a structure. Uh, basically, uh, we, we do have the VCs previously, but now we don't. So uh, if that answers your question, and I think uh, it gave me the platform of, of being on the floor very much. Uh, because what else, uh, we all know being a volunteer is very different from managing volunteers. But it gave me the edge because when I do my actual onboarding, I onboard them like what I want to hear as a volunteer, not what they should be hearing. So uh, unorthodox, yes. Uh, my, my bosses were like jaw drop, like, what did you just say? But uh, all of them took in my advice and uh, the experience that I share very much through. So if answer your question, yes, we are all three. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, we, we, yeah. Uh, we, we started off without. When I first joined without, it uh, took us like a couple of months, like past uh, two or three months, to build out a structure, uh, a manual, a handbook for volunteers. Uh, it is very, how should I say, it's very tedious <laughs> to even come up with a manual. Because, uh, and, and I'm sure all of you have no manuals. Uh, you have the first version, then you have the second version, <laughs> you have the 2.2, <laughs> you have the 3. You know, it's an ongoing process. But if that answers your question, I mean, without a structure, you never work. Yeah, uh, but when I took over the position, it was in the very early stage of planning a structure. And now the structure is in, so I'm also the implementer. That going, going down all the centers to, to build out the rapport. Uh, because the previous volunteers managers, I felt, did not have the direct rapport. Uh, basically, it was just on call. You know, and COVID, as you know, nobody could visit anybody else. So now that uh, we are able to see everybody else, I do all my onboarding in person. Even if I would do one to one, it's always in person. So I get to know the person, but doesn't get to see my face. You know, I not just hear my voice. So uh, if that answer your question, yeah, we, we do. We do. I mean, a structure will come in place. But uh, let's say if there wasn't a structure, uh, I think I will still have to be the roles that you mentioned, you know, but how it actually comes to play will be a bit messier. But with the structure, it definitely worked a lot. I mean, but uh, having said that, when I first took over, I have to work with nothing. Yeah, gradually coming out with the structure, uh, because what works for, for, for the previous, my predecessor might not work for me. You know, coming from different perspective of life and then the amount of volunteer work I've been doing. So I think, uh, and everybody's contribution comes into play, whether they are a staff or a person who have no, no, no uh, relations with a volunteer so, uh, to speak. I think everybody's feedback comes into play. That's why we, we do a lot of groundwork, you know, groundwork. And your last question was? Oh, that is another headache. <laughs> I can tell you, it's, uh, like, I agree with you. Uh, sometimes we, we, you know, the programs manager hate come to us, and then they have a program, but I don't have the volunteers to, su to support. Uh, because uh, what skill sets my volunteer have might not be able to support the program. So, uh, is that what your question is? Uh, I think, from yeah. Mm. We may think that this is good for the program, but from the program manager's perspective, this is not what I want. Because I still have to spend time yeah. to teach them, to guide them, to develop them. Because you feel that, no. Because as a volunteer, if, but when I volunteer with an organization, I want to feel that I'm part of the family. Yeah. Yeah, but if I don't get the kind of feelings from the program that I'm volunteering with, 
I can I can share my own experience because we, we do have uh, uh, we do have a situation where the volunteers and the program team uh, they actually very much like family, and they know each other. They they have a deep sense of uh, belonging. Um, so I use the example of the, the hotline you know, that we have. We have about 40, I think 45 uh, volunteers. Uh, and that hotline is uh, uh, every day, I think it runs every day, except for one or two days in Chinese New Year? And public holidays, okay. So, they, so they, are, they are very, very dedicated, very, very faithful. And some of them you know, have been serving, like I mentioned, over 20 years. Uh, and I know that because when we did our last volunteer appreciation, um, you know, they would take out birthday cakes, you know, and, and it's like staff and the volunteers just enjoying each other's uh, company. Um, so it is possible. So I, I, I point that out as a pos. I mean, that, 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 that exists. Yeah, yeah. That yes. It was really very, very um, uh, to hear that Citron in some foundation, mm. uh, from some foundation, mm. I said, I think they are currently yeah, courtline <laughs> counselors. Yeah, yeah. So ours we call them para counselors. Okay. So they mm. go through very structured training yeah. and um, they they get developed, you know, yes. like you know, periodically. Yes. And then uh, there is actually one program person yeah. from that program itself mm. that is attached to them. Yep. Yeah, so we have yep. this group of volunteers. They've been with us for I think some of them as long as like twenty years. Yes. And they are very, very close knit. Yeah. So they will always go out on their Correct. Okay, yeah. So this is that one program that is very really successful mm. in the organization. Mm. But other than that, I I, I think it's, um, so there are some lessons that we can learn from that example. I think number one, uh, these are volunteers that have chosen to commit. Uh, and you can tell they commit because they have to go through their 100, I mean for us, 100 hours of training. So it is a kind of like you have a, it's already a screening process. Yeah. right? And then because of that heavy commitment, they are committed to, of course, doing that, providing that service on a very regular basis. And when you have that regularity, that commitment, and the skill, actually, for a program person, it meets a lot of my criteria. Now, the challenge that we know that some of our program people have with volunteers is that, well, the volunteers are not so committed. They want to come when it's convenient, and then they only come maybe like once a year, let's say. Now, it's very hard to design a proper intervention when it's just touch and go. So that is the challenge, right? And that's why the, you know, that second rule I mentioned about you know, either brokering or even creating, you have to find that intersect between what a program needs and what a volunteer is willing to do. And I think that's the real challenge. But we will need to have, of course, uh, opportunities for all kinds of volunteers. Lah. Like I think what Speaker Tan mentioned, right? You know, you can let a person try volunteering, but maybe that person will, it's the start of the journey, and maybe X number of years later, they might feel that, hey, I want to now uh, commit more and be a much more regular. Yes, yes, I agree. That's right. So that's why for every volunteer that we do have, we do want to create a positive experience because it's an opportunity to convert them to become a more regular volunteer. Okay, sorry, we're, going to, we're kind of running out of time. We want to wrap it up, but I have one. I think uh, maybe we think we can address about the training and certification. Okay, what I can say is that the journey of professionalization usually takes years. Lah. So, let's say I'm a social worker, so the, the professionalization journey of social work in Singapore takes many years. It was only um, in the last decade that we started registration and we have been in existence for so long, since independence. So, uh, as I mentioned, the extent of professionalization of a profession depends on the value of the society. And also, whether that profession is dealing with issues that require protection for the purpose of public interest, then there will be higher stake. And when there's higher stake, then you need to have proper training, standardization, regulation to govern the, the profession. So it is a process of maturity, yeah. Like HR profession, yeah. it's not a fully professionalized and it's been around for a much longer time. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it's just to... And I think HR and BD, BM has a lot. Yeah, I think it's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Worse, in fact. <laughs>
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so actually, before we go, I still have one last question and one naggy question, which actually Victor asked. I think we didn't address it properly. He asked, how can we harness, uh, he was talking about board support, actually. So the question to the panel is, how can we harness board support? Because we know that that's very important. Obviously, Care Corner, the board is sold. Maybe he can also share how he harnesses it, but maybe we can also have the rest of the panelists um, share. How do you actually harness that board supports us? If the board is, doesn't have a buy-in, actually it's very difficult for the VM to do that work, right? Uh, I just share. So um, in a nutshell, CCF, our board, uh, you, you, know, you all have heard of Have Our Hope, right? So it's our signature fundraising event. Um, the event was actually started from a group of volunteers, yeah. And then they named it Have Our Hope and then roll, you know, this is the 20th anniversary. So coming back, um, so our board, our board actually made it, uh, but this is just the CCI board, huh? they actually made it a, a, a requirement. If you want to become a board director, you do have to be involved in the programs volunteering first before you even join us as a board member so that you know what it is uh, all about. Um, but uh, of course, apart from that, then, you know, for board members who are newer and who may not like what um, X mentioned about having that buy in, um, that's why the presentations and the board meetings are important because we actually show them the KPIs and then how, you know, meeting that actually will achieve your, you know, the org, the org strat goals and, you know, in the next year, in the next two years, in the next three years. So, so as long as it can be seen and it's visible, I think the keyword is visibility. Lah. They need visibility in what the VM. And, and the community engagement team is doing, then um, I think the buy-in is actually very, 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 very fast. Especially if they volunteer with us, like we get any, we, we, we will force any board director to go to any, our hospitals and volunteer a day, spend a day there with one of the volunteers or with a group of volunteers, and then they themselves witness how it is. Yeah. Um, so, so just to quickly share, just now we mentioned about the, you know, the quarrel between programs and volunteers, right? And volunteer managers, right? We actually made our own. Team team members volunteer. That means you complain about your volunteers, huh? you go and volunteer that, at that program. Yeah, we, we rotate, we actually do that. <laughs> we actually do that. We have lunch duty and then we get our colleagues to all volunteer at one, one very much complain, highly complain program. Then they come back, ah, oh, now I understand. So, so that's also one way. La. So just to quickly add, yeah. yeah so, so just to add on, uh, another key factor is about building trust. Yeah, so when I, when I first joined Touch, uh, I realized that I need to work with many internal stakeholders. And uh, usually, uh, I mean, I'm very thankful that, you know, in my previous job at YMC, I have many, I have a great exposure to the various sectors. So I was able to uh, kind of understand where they are coming from. And uh, as much as possible, we should try to negotiate a win-win situation even with your own colleagues yeah, so that everyone is aligned and then we can move forward together. It is not easy, uh, but it's definitely worth uh, the investment uh, because once you succeed, you know that uh, somebody will watch your back. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm like their standby volunteer because sometimes uh, we are short of people to deliver meals to seniors. Uh, I'll be the one, uh, I mean, if the timing is right and then I don't have any meeting, I'll support them. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 Build a volunteer system around it. So one of the things which I'm curious to know is what, how do you guys, what are the tools you use for operational excellence? Like it could be like, because right, right now everything is on Google Sheets and multiple WhatsApp groups and things like this. What are, what are some of the good operational tools? Maybe there is something which you can buy or maybe something you can use or something which you have built yourself. How, how, how does your uh, operational excellence systems, processes work? Just want to, curious to know. Okay, so. No, I just say, I just say, it's interesting. Guys, just download it. Yes, sir. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I think for us, we we made an investment uh, to go on a sales force system. So we have a sales force system, and uh, uh, and the system um, facilitates uh, the volunteer experience, especially regular volunteers. You know, when they have to kind of. Um, in the sense, indicate you know uh, that they have already participated in a certain uh, you know volunteering uh, assignment, um, and it also allows them to uh, look at the list of uh, different uh, volunteering opportunities. So they get to, in a sense, pick uh, what they would like to do. So that that's something that we have uh, recently invested. Uh, we did uh, use the design thinking process to look at the different types of volunteer archetypes and what kind of experience we would like for them to have and that was implemented I think sometime mid last year. Um, 
So that's where, where we have placed our investment. But I think um, looking ahead, um, uh, I think there needs to be a better, like, I don't know, what's the term for it? Ecosystem of, uh, you know, technology to support such things, right? So that's why I'm a bit interested in uh, what Goodhood is uh, wanting to do because I, I just heard of it from a friend who I had dinner with on Saturday and the reason why she raised that was because she's not helping a neighbour uh, who uh, husband passed away uh, about a year ago, is now isolated and then she has multiple health issues. And then she doesn't wash her clothes. She has, and because of Goodhood, I think, uh, neighbours are now like coming in, right? You know, making sure the, her clothes are clean, providing food, sending her to the hospital for her, her treatments. Uh, and I think that's a beautiful picture of how really, vo it's very organic volunteering coming around, you know, your neighbour, right? And I thought that's a, a very, very nice picture that we can kind of aspire towards, yeah. So I just want to uh, thank you for the good work uh, Goodhood is doing. Yeah. Okay. So just to answer your questions, uh, actually NCSS VR team is very helpful. Uh, you can check in with them on the, you know, uh, what are the volunteer management systems that are available. And then also there are actually toolkits and other resources that you can actually modify from there where you don't need to start from scratch. Yeah, compared to previous year when, I mean many, many years ago when we first started, uh, internet was not so, uh, I mean, informative. Yeah, so in recent years, there are many resources that are being made available. Yeah, so in any, if you're not sure, just check in with the NCSS VR team. Yeah, they're very helpful. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, so, yeah. So the other considerations uh, is also uh, dependent on the number of mobile, uh, volunteers that you mobilize. Yeah, because uh, investing in a system also involves a budget. Uh. Yeah, so, so different organizations have to decide uh, which systems uh, to use to suit their needs. Yeah. Yeah, we just started actually. So, so basically, we just um, went on. So it's very similar to Cat Corner. We are using. We are going to use Salesforce. But the interesting thing is when we had that discussion, right? The team was saying, you know, CRM is from a donor and stakeholder perspective, right? Then we have our patient um, management data is from the patient point of view. But there isn't anything from the volunteer <laughs> point of view, which which we felt was lacking. So even when we are now in with Salesforce. We just felt something isn't um, very, you know, it's just, just not there yet. So, so yeah, yeah. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, so we are not in the midst of that. So let's see how. But to answer your question, we are using Salesforce also. Mm. Okay. Actually, thank you. Actually, because uh, we really, really ran out of time. But so I just want to <laughs> thank everyone for, you know, actually we want to thank the panelists for sharing their knowledge. And we thank... Oh, yeah. Thanks for yeah. your participation as well. Yeah, those of, those of you who are just coming in, yeah, please feel free to come and sit in front. Uh, we want it to be a very cozy sharing. What was the your other panel discussion like? Was it also a small group like this? Pretty much okay, but you are not sitting in front, is it? Because <laughs> we we like informal. We want to be closer to y'all. Okay, please feel free to come and sit there. Still quite a number of seats in front. No worries, no worries. Unless you want to go off early, la. if not, if <laughs> <laughs> yeah. then we respect your choice to sit at the back. Welcome. Okay, sorry, maybe I'll just start. I'll start by introducing our panellists. All right. Here we have the CEO of Children's Cancer Foundation, or CCF for short, and she has been in the social. She, uh, she has been in social work for many years, managing cases on child protection, family violence, and addiction. An interest, interesting story about Haying is that her first impression of a volunteer manager was when she was in secondary school. She was like cleaning the house of an elderly, and one of the volunteers actually uh, accidentally, or, or rather, she yeah okay accidentally threw away a Van Houten chocolate tin. And you know, that actually consists of the elderly's life savings. So wow, but she experienced how that volunteer manager um, very calmly handled the situation. And the most interesting thing is, many years later, when she started working in FSC, she recruited that volunteer manager. 
So, there was, yeah, he left you a very good impression, right? colleagues 14 years later. <laughs> yeah. But the very traumatic experience was we had to comb through the rubbish chute to find the Van yeah, so yeah. They had to. Uh. <laughs> Also quite traumatic for a teenager, right? Back then. Uh, actually no, I, I was You're not a teenager. Okay, interesting. Alright, so next we have Mr. Chan Wee Peng, who is a senior social work lecturer at SUSS. He, uh, before joining SUSS, he has been in NCSS for many years, and he's happy to be part of the event organized by both his prior and current employer. So finally, we have Christian Chow, who is a CEO of Care Corner. He describes himself as an OD practitioner in leaders' clothing, uh, with experiences in public, private, and people sectors. He enjoys early morning runs and needs to sleep by 11 p.m. Mm -hmm. ah. My dream sleeping time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so let's give a warm welcome to all our panellists. So now each of these panellists come with their own unique perspective to better understand how we can invest in the growth of a volunteer manager. But they have also suggested that they are not the only experts in this area and they recognise that they are among peers. Some of you have also been doing volunteer management for a long time and um, they, they said that maybe everyone here can have something to contribute. So in the end, instead of a Q&A, we might have just like a cross-sharing. So, and also we just also check with Priscilla. We are happy if you, know, you have other questions you want to ask, we can just go with the flow. Okay, so this is, that's why we wanted a very small, intimate sharing thing. And our panellists are very flexible. They say, oh, okay, okay, as long as you feel supported. Okay. <laughs> so, let's, uh, so what we're going to do in this is to, we will still stick to this topic first, uh, developing and equipping your volunteer manager. So we will start with the why. Why you must invest le, in a professional volunteer manager? Uh, what are the capabilities and how can we build these capabilities? All right, so we start with the first question. What makes a professional volunteer manager? Yeah, we are asked beeping. Okay, right. Um, so if you look at what makes a profession a profession in a sense, right? So um, there are a few characteristics. Uh. Uh, one is uh, there's a body of knowledge that's unique to that profession. They will require the profession to go through the training, right? Maybe usually it's an undergraduate course to prepare the person. And um, as the profession matures, eventually there will be some form of regulation. Uh, so this can be in the form of licensing, registration, and then a professional body. So uh, the, the speed or the readiness of a profession to become a profession in a society really depends on the value of the society. Uh, uh, the importance of that particular role uh, played in a society, and uh, whether that profession is working on issues that require public protection, uh, uh, protection of interests of the public. So the stake will be higher. So the, the speed of uh, professionalization will be, will be faster. So I think if we talk about professionalization of volunteer managers, this is something that's going to be a very long journey. So why it's more important is maybe professionalism. Professional is, is, is uh, something that's more tangible. It means that uh, volunteer managers has pathway to develop themselves professionally. You can uh, share certain standards of, of conduct, of uh, uh, standards of service, uh, in which you can um, develop a trust between you and the stakeholders. And I think in Singapore, we are at a very exciting phase. And NCSS together with stakeholders has developed foundational kind of framework for volunteer managers in Singapore to be able to equip with this kind of competency. And there's a learning development roadmap that map out the career development of volunteer managers. So as long as the stakeholders embrace such tools, uh, there's some form of consistency. I think there's a lot of uh, potential for volunteer managers to develop in Singapore. That's very good news for us, right? <laughs> All right, so but the next question then is, oh, anybody else actually, sorry, on the panel who wants to add on? No? Okay, then I will ask the next question. <laughs> yes, a lecturer, so very clear. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so, why is investing in volunteer management useful for organisational growth? Maybe we will start with Hain. 
Uh, I'm not sure whether because just now the session, right? Many of you belong to you know teams with many of you belong to the Copcoms with Marcoms, you know, with donor relations with community uh, partnerships. But um, maybe I just share what CCF does. So in CCF, how we make volunteer management very very strategic is we actually elevated and then we expanded the scope. So this, uh, so basically, right? Our VM we don't call it VM, we call it community engagement in CCF. So what we do is actually. Um, apart from the very tactical you know, recruitment of volunteers, we also look at the very, very strategic engagement of volunteers, uh, of individual and corporate uh, volunteers, meaning to change and then to convert them into long-term supporters for CCF. Um, it may be very different because I'm not sure what your you know, uh, business model is like, but in CCF, we are 99% um, self-funded. We actually uh, fundraise ourselves instead of relying on government funding. So basically, uh, managing stakeholders and cultivating new donors and also new partnerships is very, very important to us. So basically, in CCF, this is, this is how we see uh, volunteer management playing that more strategic role because many times they are the first contact for many, many corporates who may not want to donate first, but how do we then give them the CCF experience, right? And then from there, how do they become a champion and advocate for CCF in all of their networks? So basically in CCF, right, our team actually shares common KPIs with the fundraising and also the Marcoms team. So basically common KPIs such as, you know, how many new um, stakeholders, how many new relationships have we cultivated in a year, how many have we retained, and then we report that back to our board um, annually and once every three months. So, so strategically, that's how we position um, VM in CCF. Uh, also, looking at VM in three core areas, the first one is basically looking at VM, of course, designing that whole entire holistic experience for our, uh, for our volunteers, right? Being engaged and, uh, you know, and supported. The second one is then how do we look at our own internal stakeholders, our own programs, our own direct services, what kind of volunteers are needed to run those services. So how do we also meet the internal stakeholders' needs, our programs, our direct services teams. Then externally, how do we then, like what I mentioned, cultivate that relationships with other corporates or with other individuals and give them that you know very unique CCF experience. So this is how we see it very, very um, strategically. So um, it's not uh, you know a volunteer manager, it's just someone who recruits calls up volunteers oh you know today my program needs this then I will you know call this person up so it goes beyond that you know at, at a larger level looking at the whole of org growth yeah that's so, so that's how we see it in CCF um, yeah so for for us at Care Corner uh, in a way is uh, to some extent uh, similar to uh, CCF. Um, so for Care Corner, our volunteer managers sit within a function called volunteer and community engagement. Um, and uh, maybe to provide a bit of context, you know, as to why uh, they sit under this broad, uh, bigger function, because uh, for us in Care Corner, actually the, the team has three key responsibilities. So the first responsibility is uh, really the, uh, our internal uh, volunteer managers, right? So Care Corner, we have our own volunteering needs. Uh, and the team then looks at, you know, how do they, uh, you know, cater to those needs. Uh, the second function uh, is that uh, we, we also run three of the SG Cares uh, Volunteer Center. So that has its own set of uh, responsibilities because uh, in that p uh, capacity, they need to, of course, recruit volunteers and then work with community partners to then deploy those volunteers to meet the needs of the community, right? And so there's a bit of that, a lot of that community engagement work. And then there's a third role that we play, um, and that's uh, together with uh, Youth Core Singapore. So we are one of two agencies that provide uh, youth, uh, youth volunteer development programs. So specifically for youth volunteers. So that's, that's the, the third uh, thing that the team does. Um, the other thing that uh, we see for ourselves in Care Corner is that, I mean, maybe initially, you know, when we look at volunteers, the, the first thought is that, okay, you know, these are, of course, you know, good additional resource, you know, to supplement, uh, you know, our professional staff. Uh, so they are, you know, in, in a sense, uh, extra hands and legs uh, to, do the, to do the job. In a way, that is true, but I think we, for us, we believe that actually the, the volunteers themselves uh, are people that we want to, in that sense, um, have an impact on. 
so that the team in our, our so-called volunteer, uh, volunteering development framework, one of the core things that we want to do is we want to create a transformative experience uh, for the volunteer. Uh, and then later, I'll be, I might want to share a little bit why I think that transformative experience is very important you know, for some of the more demanding volunteering uh, actually jobs that uh, we really do need. Right? Uh, so that, that's, a, the, the, that's what we do. And then the, the third thing is that I think uh, as we look at volunteering, um, it's also actually an opportunity to actually create uh, a more resilient community. So, you know, while of, while of course trying to help the families, the individuals within the community, but actually volunteering in a way is a, a, a longer term investment in trying to strengthen the whole community itself. So that actually, actually ideally, right, I mean, for SSA, ideally is that, you know, one day we don't really need to exist. Yeah, that would be ideal. When the community is really able to just come together and take care of each other. I think that would be a, I mean, <laughs> I mean, there's a, you know, it's a very, very, uh, it's a dream, but I mean, I think working towards it, uh, volunteerism is actually one way uh, that we can try to achieve it uh, closer. And I'll share with you a little story that I did uh, in the previous session later, yeah, uh, regarding that. Mm. Thanks. Yeah, so, so just, just to add on, <coughs> um, the structures and also the support provided for the volunteer manager actually differ. Uh, from organization to organization, and uh, most of the time, it's also dependent on the needs of the organization as well. Yeah. So um, the next questions that we'll be asking is also, um, in the whole process, how do, how do you actually engage or even harness uh, support from your board? Yeah, to provide, to make provision for a volunteer manager. Who would like yeah, to? Okay, okay. Sorry, Victor, can you say that again? Oh, yeah, so, so I mean in the whole process. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yes. Yeah, I'm skipping the capability first. So I'm just asking about how, how do you actually harness support from, from your board? Uh, oh, yeah, oh, okay, together. sure, sure. Um, I'm not sure they are aware. CCF, we run our signature. I shared just now we fundraise 99% of our funds, right? We don't uh, rely on government funding. So we actually have a signature um, fundraising event called Have a Hope. So we do that um, every year. Um, so CCF runs that. So Have a Hope actually started, it's a grounds up uh, event. Huh? It was started from volunteers actually because of a group of volunteers that we had like 20 years ago. Uh, CCF is actually in its 20th run this year. Um, anyone wants to come and share with us <laughs> this year? Yeah, okay, anyway, so, so coming back. Um, so, so basically, um, the board, right, um, they all, uh, all of them, or, or, my, or, or rather I would say my CCF board, uh, whichever, whoever wants to become a board director, they need to actually volunteer in one of our programs first for at least um, three months to a year before they can become a board director. So that's uh, my requirement for boards. So basically, um, to also recognize the support that you know volunteers is, is uh, especially important. So to add on to that, um, my volunteer manager, um, together with the team, uh, we actually hold uh, we ac they actually present to the board uh, at the board meetings every quarter to share KPIs, to share you know what they had done, to share progress, and then they also report back to the board at the end of the year. Uh, they are also involved in budgeting. So um, whenever we do budgeting, the whole team comes together together with the direct service team so that they can you know plan uh, resources in CCF we do a three-year three-year planning so that is also how we get the board to recognize that you know um, just now I mentioned a key word is visibility the work needs to be very visible to the board and then the very key uh, results needs to be shown um, so that's why we do that we make that presentation to the board every quarter that's one so secondly also because my board you know already know um, recognizes the importance of being volunteers themselves so, so that's also that part. Um, when we do interviewing for our own volunteer managers, we actually let them know that it is a role that involves very uh, strategic work plans. We, we involve them right from the start. You know, once you join the team, you'll be involved in work planning, you'll be involved in strategic planning, you'll be involved in your three-year plans. So um, there's no running away. It's not an admin role. It is not a calling our volunteers, you know, to see who is available, although you do also need to do that. So, um, so the school scope is already widened right at the start so that uh, everyone is involved in the entire process, including the board. Yeah. Um, I think for CareConnect, it's uh, uh, quite, quite similar. So um, 
Um, some of you might know Gary. So Gary, uh, he heads our volunteer and community engagement team uh, and the entire uh, function. So he presents to the board, you know, the work that we do uh, as an update to the board. Um, I think what has also really helped is that uh, we do have board members who are volunteers, you know. So we have board members who actually volunteer as uh, family befrienders, right? Uh, and, and they are, uh, really have a very, I mean, they, and because they have such a positive experience being a volunteer, uh, you know, it's very, it's, it's, it's nice because within the board, you do have individuals who would be very natural advocates for the work of volunteer, uh, you know, uh, management. So I think those are things that um, I think has really helped us. And I think like what um, uh, Haying mentioned, actually the, just the visibility. La. So um, uh, Gary, he is uh, actually also part of the senior management team. So in terms of you know, opportunities to engage with the board, opportunities to engage uh, in, in important uh, uh, decisions, uh, not just pertaining to volunteer management, but really organizationally, right? And even the, the kind of services that we do. Uh, he has, in that sense, um, uh, the license and the, the, the opportunity to also kind of like, uh, you know, give voice to it. So I think because of that, it's quite natural for us to always, I, I guess, take into consideration how would this, uh, you know, um, uh, or rather how does volunteers kind of like impact, uh, you know, the way we want to do our work, uh, especially when we're thinking about scaling, right? Uh, scaling the kind of uh, uh, impact that we want to have in the community. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, what do we Okay, can we go back to the question then? Sure. about Because just now we talked about how, you know, to, why do we need to invest and we said that it is a very strategic role. And uh, yeah, so I think some of us here could also be curious, right? Then how can, what areas can volunteer managers be developed to play this role then? Um, um, yeah, I'll, I'll just share quickly and then, yeah. Um, so for, for, for us, I think we see... Um, the role that volunteer managers can play maybe at uh, three levels, right? Uh, just, just to you know, kind of simplify it. So the first level is really a facilitator level. And when we talk about facilitator, it's really about how do we create a very good volunteering experience for the individual or for the group of individuals, right? So that, I think that is one of the key, I think most volunteer managers would probably uh, play that role. And uh, for that kind of role, then the kind of skills you need obviously would be things like, you know, uh, very good, strong interpersonal skills, uh, being able to you know present well, relate you know well with your with uh, the individuals. Now the second level skill um, from facilitator goes into what I call maybe a broker role, um, and I think that was also mentioned uh, earlier this this uh, you know in the conference. Sometimes the the what the volunteers are willing to or interested in doing may not really fit what the beneficiaries or the programs need, and therefore you need a volunteer manager to play the role of brokering a, a little, like trying to find like, what is the fit? What can the volunteers, you know, uh, do or stretch, you know, in order to do? Or, and what can the beneficiaries or programs kind of like, accommodate? So it's a high level order skill because you need that negotiation skill, um, you know, very, uh, be a very good stake, stakeholder, uh, uh, you know, management, because you're working with sometimes the organizations that will be supplying those volunteers. So it's a, I would say a slightly higher order level of skill. Now the third level for, for us is more like a creator role. So it's not just uh, facilitating and brokering, but really creating uh, programs that do keep the volunteer op, uh, role in mind. Uh, and we have some programs that uh, you know, um, started out that way and, um, and the volunteer manager then needs to work very closely with uh, our service group heads or uh, the individuals that are in a sense owning the program and then designing something that actually does keep the volunteer role in mind. And that requires another level of skill because they need to have design skills, they need to uh, maybe understand the theory of success, uh, you know, they need to uh, be able to, uh, uh, you know, understand, you know, how does, in how does intervention get designed, you know. Um, so there's another very high, I mean, I would say a more strategic kind of uh, skill set that the volunteer manager will then need to uh, have, yeah. Mm. Anybody else want to so if not, we pause for a while. Um, you all have any questions, uh, just feel free to, to direct it to us. Yeah. Anyone, any questions? Yeah, anyway, we, we learn from one, and one another. So earlier on, we, we, we had someone uh, asking, asking us, you know, uh, how, how do you actually 
uh, manage the, the one who, who, I mean the program teams and the VM teams, uh, meaning that uh, there could be some tension because, uh, I mean, from the VM side, I have the volunteers, but then they might not serve the needs of the, uh, I mean, colleagues who is running the programs. Yeah. So, yeah. so this question was being uh, posted to us. Uh, maybe you want to touch Maybe on we that. just want to ask this group, is this something you would like to know? Because yeah. that was a question posed earlier. <laughs> is this... So, okay, okay. Diana is keen. <laughs> maybe I share, but it sounds like it's a constant quarrel <laughs> between, <laughs> between the two different teams, right? Um, okay, so it's not like it's no, no, no easy or, you know, easy black and white, you know, solution. But um, I, I may, maybe I can give an example. Um, in CCL, we actually run this survivorship program. So, fortunately, uh, most children get cured of their cancer, but, but um, it's becoming chronic. That means they suffer from late side effects. So depending on where the cancer is located, um, some of them may suffer from impaired cognitive abilities. Uh, let's say if it's a, a, a brain tumor, uh, mostly brain tumors. Um, so, so we actually have this group of survivors whom they are already in their 20s, but uh, really um, you know, cannot find employment somewhere else or anywhere else because of their disabilities. So basically, um, we, we actually started this um, program five years ago, just to, it started the social work team, social workers being social workers, I'm a social worker myself, you know, but very simply, we just wanted to equip the, the group of survivors, 20 of them, with some very basic skill sets, that's all. At the time, we did pottery, we did um, photo taking, and then we equipped them with photo taking skills and, you know, pottery, we had our art therapists who come in with, um, with, with, with pottery. So, but at the time, the, the volunteer manager was like, you are thinking like very, you know, like only half a year or one year, you're not thinking far enough ahead, okay? What about the end products? They need to be able to sell to market. They need to be able to know what platforms, right? So, so and uh, you know, that, then the, the social worker team was very stunned and they just told the, my volunteer manager, no, 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 we only want to do this. Okay, no, you just find volunteers for us to do this. <laughs> then, then, of course, like what Christian mentioned, then the brokering happens, right? And then um, the volunteer manager was very smart. She actually found a group of corporate, uh, corporate volunteers who are really very good at media, uh, media, digital, marketing and also selling on different platforms and they actually did a demo for the social workers. The social workers were so impressed themselves that, okay, let's do this. So, so, so basically I think sometimes, so like what um, Christian mentioned just now, the third layer, the creation, right? The co-create, that's where we see, that's where the value comes in. And that's where your group of volunteers and even your volunteer manager can see beyond what your current program can provide. And it is uh, definitely much more strategic than just, you know, equipping our survivors with, um, you know, photo taking skills and pottery skills, right? So, 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 so that's an example where you know definitely there will be tensions but how can we look further ahead so 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 basically I think my my uh, team the volunteer team the community engagement team and now the direct services team have come to a point where the direct services team will actually ask the CE team is there anything else that you see can be done for this program not only now next year in two years time do you already have a group of volunteers whom you foresee can help us meet that need if you have let's do it yeah, even if you don't have it, we try, we find along the way. So that's how that relationship has become. But of course, after some years of you know trying to to work around different differences, uh. but I think one thing is also one key difference is for the direct services teams for the programs to see the value of what the volunteers and the volunteer manager can bring in. I think that's very important. They need to see it themselves. Yeah. Hmm. Um, another example that could, just, just very quick one just now was you know sometimes the so, the social workers themselves host volunteers right and then for their own programs and then they get a lot of, and then they complain you know why is this volunteer doing this you know it doesn't make sense so so this year we actually rotate we get all our team members to do volunteering at our own programs that means we have lunch duties and we purposely put them in the most complaint program you complain about volunteers right you go and do it you see what feedback you get so so that's also another way of understanding things from a different perspective yeah from a volunteer's perspective yeah so um, maybe I'll, I'll share uh, a perspective on, uh, you know, sometimes this tension between uh, volunteers and programs, right? So I share the perspective from a program that uh, uh, is heavily actually uh, run by volunteers, and they have a very, very good relationship uh, with the, the full-time program team. 
so this is our Mandarin uh, hotline. Uh, it's a service that's actually almost completely run by our volunteers, right? Um, and they have such a there's such a strong bond between the volunteers and the, the staff because we they, they, they are cited within our counseling center that they they are like um, a really sense of like family and you know a sense of togetherness. Yeah. But I think there are some key factors that made it possible. I think number one is the type of volunteers. So to be a volunteer in that center, they need to go through 100 hours of training. That's not a small commitment. And because you, they have to go through their 100 hours of training, it be, it's a natural screen. Because these are then volunteers that are really committed. They, they are there because they want to do this on a sustained and regular basis. So they are committed to the work. And I think because of that, then the relationship with the full-time team is one that is really, I mean, there's a real natural commitment to each other. So I think that sometimes the challenge uh, and the tension is because the volunteers might be, you know, more like, oh, I just want to uh, spend one hour, you know, once a year doing something that is convenient, uh, you know, and then suits my time slot. Then I think that's where maybe the, pro the services team will find that, hey, you know, uh, actually, I'm, am I serving you? Am I serving my beneficiaries? I think that's the tension, right? So I guess the trick for us is how do we try to close that gap? Because if we just insist that, oh, you know, we just want to take care of volunteers and do things that are convenient and easy for them and then do it at the expense of, let's say, the work and the beneficiaries, I think that then the natural tension will be, be quite obvious. So that's why I think for us, um, the, the, the key thing is, for those that are maybe not so committed, how do we create a volunteering experience that it is actually very, very positive and almost transformational, that they want to do something more regularly because that is really the goal. It's not about how many volunteers, uh, but really how many regular volunteers we, we want to you know, be able to enlist. Um, so that's one thing that, uh, that has uh, uh, worked very well for us. The other thing that has helped is uh, actually our volunteer managers. Uh, we have actually about 10 of them uh, just due to the range of work, we have volunteer managers that actually um, are rotated uh, from other parts of Care Corner into that role. So they actually were social workers. So they were actually from the program side. And then they wanted the opportunity to play a role as a volunteer manager as part of their own, uh, I guess, uh, you know, career exposure development. And so when you have uh, social workers who then you know, become volunteer managers, actually that helps facilitate a lot of the, the understanding uh, you know, and how to bridge, uh, you know, the two worlds la, together. And then some of them, of course, will, might go back to the social work, but even if they do that, I mean, then it, it still helps, right? Because it helps, just helps the overall ability to, uh, for both sides to work well together. Yeah. Thanks, Christian. Well, I'll just add that, um, she, uh, at a tactical level, uh, to resolve such issue, uh, Things such as uh, clarity of roles right, between uh, employees as, as well as volunteer can possibly uh, address this. But I think more importantly, at a strategic level, the organisation needs to have a strategic sense of what's the role, what's the role of volunteers uh, in the operation of the organisation, in the business model of the organisation. When you have a top level clarity on the role of volunteers, the role that they can play, then I think at the op operation level, employees will know how to manage this uh, in terms of role clarity. I think that's very important because sometimes when decisions is made about hiring a volunteer manager or having volunteers, uh, it is made, made at a tactical level. So it is not so effective. You have root blocks along the way. So very quickly, just to share with you my experience of SUSS. So this is not in terms of volunteers, but SUSS has a unique feature of using associate as part of uh, the teaching faculty. And uh, over the years, this has become our strength. And because decision was made earlier that we are going to use practitioners as part of the, uh, the teaching faculty team in SUSS, we have developed processes, policies to support that. And that's very important. So if an organization made a strategic decision that volunteer is going to be an integral part in the organization operation in terms of how it sustains itself, how it, it grows its competitive advantage, then you will have its own policy and procedures that would naturally make this integral into the organization. Yeah, so I just want to share that from my perspective. Thanks, thanks, Vicky. So what I've heard is that really, <clears throat> this is a very strategic role. We have to play very strategically. And, but then the thing is, then how can volunteer managers be equipped 
to play this role. Okay, I mean, the, a good place to start is to go to the NCSS website, all right, my former employer, where I think they have developed um, a, a toolkit, a volunteer uh, uh, management toolkit, as well as a learning development roadmap for volunteer, practitioner, volunteer management practitioners. And this is co-created with the industry, with uh, uh, volunteer management uh, practitioners. And it, it sort of laid out the different competency of volunteer managers, and one of it is actually strategic thinking, um, be aware of the larger environment and how you can value add to your organization because it's a dynamic process. Your board may not have that awareness at the, in the first place, but you can, in a way, educate the board about the value of volunteers and how it can play a role in the longer term plan of this organization. And with that, that it may change the dynamic gradually. All right? So it, it depends on you as well, right? the tactical role that you can play within your organization in this change management. If I can uh, add a bit to it, um, I think um, some of these capabilities that is, uh, you know, truly are quite strategic. Um, and a good start, of course, would be you know, to send them for a program and, and learn the theory, you know, etc. Um, I don't think, but I don't think it will be sufficient. Yeah. So uh, I think the earlier group we asked, because I think um, in the morning someone cited, I think it was uh, five loss, right? You know, they, oh, they brought in one volunteer manager and made a world of a difference. And then the question was, Oh, did that one man? What, did that one volunteer manager do everything, right? Uh, I don't know, but um, I suspect that um, either the volunteer manager came as a, a very mature uh, individual with already uh, existing capability, just that it's just translated into the work of volunteer manager. That's one possibility. The other one is maybe not so mature, but I think the CE played a very important part in supplementing uh, what the. Uh, a volunteer manager would need to do. That means it's not just left to the volunteer manager. The management team, the leadership is thinking alongside with the volunteer manager. It cannot just be left to that one, one, you know, one poor person. It's a really a responsibility of the, of the entire management team. So I think there are ways to think about this, but I think those capabilities, I think if you are thinking of a fresh grad, just hire someone you know, for the cheap, and then it will do miracles. I, I, I really honestly don't think that will happen. Yeah. Uh, in our case, like for some of you might know Gary, I mean, Gary has a lot of already prior experience. And even when he joined us, um, you know, his full job wasn't just doing actually volunteer management at that time. Uh, he was also in charge of another service. So he was responsible for a service group. It's only now that the work is a lot more extensive that really, you know, uh, we needed him to dedicate more attention in this very strategic area. But this is the journey that we take. So it's not, yeah, you can just like hire one person and then expect the person to do miracles. I think you need to look at the context. Yeah, as well. I just add on quickly. Um, so basically, right, also depends on the maturity of the organization because a lot of times when organizations develop, right, um, it is it's no longer turf. I always call it turf guarding. Uh. Like I shared just now, my CE, uh, my community engagement team is together with fundraising and also together with Marcoms. Um, you know, traditionally, uh, uh, SSA will be very, very focused on direct services, right, social work. And, and then, then in my CCF side, um, will be fundraising. Yeah, because we we fundraise ourselves. So basically, then, then how do we then not turf guard? That means, what about that cross collaboration that needs to happen um, in in a, you know in a CE role, or in a community engagement role, in a volunteer management role? Um, that has to be again right from the onset the culture of the organization how do we work better together how do we work better together as a team instead of you know saying so so for example when we first started community engagement my volunteer manager was very confused she came and say hey you know hi you say that you know I, I now need, need to cultivate relationships but my fundraising manager is also out there cultivating relationships so how are so so do we compete you know <laughs> or how, how do we go about doing that then the fundraising manager came and complained and say, hey, no, and now you know she has her contacts. I have my contacts. Um, you know we don't know who who we have spoken to. <laughs> so 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 that was the start. You know, but but how as we progress and as this you know with structure and with um, processes in place and with better maturity, how then can um, each team share resources instead of competing for resources? That is actually a very key process or key thing that needs to happen for that cross collaboration. Yeah. So just to add here. Thanks, thanks for all your sharing. Uh, any, any questions from the floor? Yep.
I read somehow online that, that there was a professional association for volunteer managers. Correct me if I'm not wrong. Uh, but I can't seem to read about it anymore. So I was wondering whether, uh, as you have, uh, I think Wei Ming has uh, alluded to how, you know, uh, being a community of uh, professional uh, practitioners, how would such a professional association, I mean, if it uh, arises again, uh, fit into the current ecosystem? Thank you. Well, I think uh, NCSS is trying to cultivate this body, uh, this group of um, uh, collective network among the volunteer managers in the sector. I, I tried to research on that group, that body that you, you mentioned, the member, the what's that, the membership organisation uh, uh, that you mentioned. I, I think it's more like a training development um, uh, organisation rather than a membership body. Uh, and I believe NCSS has also engaged their service to train volunteer managers in the past. Yeah. So as it is right now, I do not think that it's a professional body for volunteer managers. Sorry, can I just add on, right? Apart from the body, because now NCSS has this, you know, community of volunteer managers, right? Which previously, you know, uh, it did, it didn't exist. So just imagine each of you in your own organization. And then when you move around, and as long as you're still in the sector, you're still in contact with one another. I think that's a very powerful, powerful... Uh, yes, go, go. Yes. So then I'm uh, understand, you know, we have MVPC as well. Yes. Uh, so I'm wondering how do these different entities fit into the entire system? Because I see that there are a lot of SSAs here. Yes. Right? Okay. Even, even the term has changed from BWO to SSAs. Yes. So my, my larger question, if you don't mind, I just throw it out. Uh, I read one of the definition of management is to control and manage people and resources. So I was wondering whether this term itself is it really that helpful? I don't know because it's got a very corporate HR kind of context, you know? Or is it more in terms of uh, with a, a synonym like a stewardship? Would it be better? I don't know. I'm just throwing out this discussion around in terms of semantics. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, maybe I just quickly address it. So, so when you mean stewardship, you mean you mean with NVPC and then we mean and with N. Yeah, two two separate things. So how? Yes. I think to answer your first question first, I think um, NCSS had taken that first step into you know really rallying the the sector of VMs so so to come together. So if you are you know but but you are here still in a network even though you are not an SSA. So please feel free to join because I think where my point was uh, where I was coming from just now is each of you no matter where you are in your various organization, as long as you know one another, you always have that network with you, right? And you always tap on you know it is. You your your tribe basically it is your tribe so so how do you make the full use of that and as you move around how do you make the full use of that so even though you may be from the environmental but you may join the sector or someone from the sector may join your your site so so i think that networking is very important so not sure if i answered that adequately so secondly the semantics right mm, i think personally i've never liked the word management <laughs> I, I don't use, okay, in, in CCF, I don't use the word staff, I don't use the word management, because I always have team members who come and tell me, last time, hi, you know, management did this, I always ask them, who is management? <laughs> like, you know, management did this, so it's like a very dirty word, so I was like, okay, please, please, no, no, so, so just very personally, I use the word leadership, so because everyone is a leader, so as long as you're in the management, in CCF, management, we don't call management, we call senior leadership team, that's all, um, because everyone is a leader, no matter what your title is, but this is just my personal, <laughs> yeah, personal reply to you. I mean, yeah, actually, I, 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 I like the word stewardship, and we use it as uh, often as we can, um, uh, more for internal reference and to remind ourselves that actually it is stewardship, right? We don't control, uh, and we don't own it in that sense, yeah. Um, 
But I think, yeah, sometimes for, I guess, uh, convenience of comms, especially with external stakeholders, you know, I mean, it's, a, it's against the context. Um, actually, to your earlier point, I think it's, it's interesting that you asked that question. And if there is a, a potential gap, I think maybe it should be raised to our colleagues in NCSS and maybe to see if there is actually uh, room and opportunities for, you know, uh, either an uh, uh, enlarged uh, volunteer management community or the opportunities for, you know, maybe some subsector, but yet, you know, still uh, a, a large group. Because I think MCCY would have interest in, in it. Right, because MCCY is across all uh, you know subsectors. So, I think if there is a gap, I think yeah, maybe there's an opportunity to address it. Mm. Yeah. So uh, maybe just to add on as a VM practitioner, uh, so so the skill sets that we acquire over the years, uh, be it in the social service sector or even other sector like arts or even sports, uh, it is still applicable uh, as we manage uh, volunteers. Yeah. So I hope that address your 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 questions. And uh, of course, um, there are many ways of uh, coining the, the term. So the, vo the volunteer management is more like a process uh, it, which includes recruitment, retention, review, and uh, recognition of volunteers. So, uh, and it also includes the risk management part uh, of the VM. Yeah, so that's why they use the word volunteer management. Yeah, thanks. Okay, just now someone else raised hand, right? I want to... No, it's just a very quick question. Okay. Just like with all roles in a company, um, if your VM or volunteer engagement uh, professional leaves, they are the ones that have the connection with all, most of your volunteers, those relationships and everything. So how as an as a organization are you managing that risk? Because uh, I think that happens you know, day to day with any role in your organization, but especially with volunteers. Uh, good question. Uh, so I make sure I take care of my volunteer managers very, very well. <laughs> I think that's one. Um, I think the other one that we do is that we have invested in a system. Yeah, so uh, while uh, that cannot replace the actual, you know, obviously the relationship, uh, but the history uh, of the relationship, you know, what we have done with uh, and uh, uh, the journey that we've taken, you know, with the volunteer, and in our case, actually, also the, the, the institutional... Um, partner, right? Whether it is the corporate that is uh, providing volunteers to us or the community partners that are actually tapping on our volunteers. I think that is the, uh, the part that we want to make sure that we take care of. Um, we try also to make sure that um, uh, we adopt maybe like a team approach so it's not just one person uh, that the person has a relationship with. Uh, and then for myself as the, as, the, as the CEO, whether it's for our key corporate partners who provide donors, uh, provide volunteers, or our key donors, uh, I try to have also a direct relationship uh, with those uh, uh, partners. So I think those are ways to mitigate it, but definitely you know, when you lose uh, a very good volunteer manager uh, who has very, very deep relationships with uh, you know, your partners, it will be a loss. Yeah, it will be a loss. So make sure you take care of them. But also put in place, of course, you know, other, uh, yeah, uh, I guess, uh, mitigation actions, you know, just to kind of minimize the impact it may have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just want to add on. So another side, because this year we, we, um, you know, it's all minors, right? All young, young children. So, so we take very, very, um, we are very, very careful. So whenever we do the entire selection process, especially programs that um, have one-to-one -one interaction, like we do have tutoring programs for kids. Um, so, so for such programs that, especially that one-to-one, -one, we actually do screen them. We get them, uh, we get the consent to get any criminal records or to, yeah, just be very, very safe. So, so this. This is just another dimension of that risk that, that we are talking about. Yeah. yeah thanks. Uh, anyone any more questions? No. Okay, maybe just to add on, uh, what happened when a person leaves? Yeah, so so as a as a practitioner, I think it is also we also need to be a responsible one. If we join other organizations, <laughs> Uh, it is best that we don't bring the volunteer along. Uh, yeah. So so this is what uh, I've been doing in the past. And and I always tell them that I won't be here forever. Uh, but it is important that you support the cause of the organization. Yeah. So so as a VM practitioner, sometimes we need to do that for the organizations. Yeah, of course, definitely uh, even even in my current organizations, 
Uh, I do see that uh, because we conduct volunteer survey on an annual basis, so when, uh, when uh, one of my colleagues left, uh, if the transition is not being managed, we can see that the volunteer satisfaction uh, numbers will drop. Yeah. So, so that is something that, uh, yeah, I mean, when you know that your colleague is leaving and, and you need to look into that transition. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, any, any more questions? Yeah, feel free to, to ask. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It took us years to journey. I think, of course, it definitely takes like minded people and then, um, of course, a board, the, the leadership driving it. But as much as the leadership driving it, there has to be on the ground movement from volunteers. So we were very lucky. I mentioned just now we had a very strong group of volunteers who started Have a Hope with us. And then that actually, you know, let everyone know, oh, you know, that's the power, really the power of volunteers coming together. So um, sometimes that may not happen, but it may happen organically. Or, or you just need to keep showing, you know, whoever it is, you need to show the results of having that. Yeah, but of course, reminding the teams that we need to be better than yesterday, I think that had worked for us. Yeah, so I'm not sure, I'm sorry, I'm not sure whether that, <laughs> that, that is sufficient. Yeah. I, I think I'll add, what I'll add is, um, I think um, uh, number one um, is uh, to really articulate that actually these are the, uh, expectations or that you know you can actually do more than just facilitate and that you should be thinking about brokering and that you shouldn't just accept whatever you know the corporate says they want to do as a volunteer opportunity so I think making that very clear and then maybe because you know you are also a senior leader you know um, uh, uh, that gives them that confidence to be able to to act that out yeah I think that that's one the other one that I think for uh, us that we are really thinking about this uh, because we are quite clear about two key areas that we want to tackle. Uh, one is really uh, comlink and you know, uh, you know, working with families with children and the entire intergen intergenerational issue. The other one is um, working with seniors and the entire active aging, healthier SG. So there are two very broad key areas. It's a very, very complex space, uh, as you know. Uh, and we know that actually volunteers are needed. Actually key to both, to addressing both is volunteers. We, 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 we know that the question is, how, how is it going to be designed uh, you know, in a way that allows volunteers to actually play a meaningful part? So with that, as a kind of like, I guess I think uh, we Pin mentioned, right, that kind of strategic, like, oh, we need to address this, then we have to start thinking about, okay, so for, you know, for Gary and his team and for our other senior leaders, how are we looking at addressing this? So part of the entire uh, innovation journey, trying to you know, uh, address some of these gaps, we we'll already have to feature how will volunteers be playing a part? Because we know that we can't, we can't address this issue uh, purely as, a, as an agency alone. Yeah. So I think with that, it kind of, I guess, sends a bit of pressure, but yet creates a room for our volunteer managers to actually play that more uh, strategic role. Yeah. I think to add on, Christian mentioned the need, right? The need is actually sometimes what drives organisations to do certain things that they have never thought of doing. So for example, like what I mentioned just now, we are 99% self-funded, but we want to grow our programmes, right? But we cannot keep hiring, we cannot keep growing our manpower. So how do we do that? We are then forced to really think about man, manpower, but in terms of volunteers. So how do we strategically grow that group? So this is also what, you know, we have that need. We are forced to think along that line. So how can we creatively co-create that with our volunteers? That's also the questions that we're asking now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, in view of time, uh, yeah. So do you have any last questions? Yeah. If not, then uh, we will wrap up by taking group photo. All right. Yeah. So so let's. <laughs> Let's uh, take a group photo. Um, yeah. Are you helping us? Yeah, uh, thanks. So, so we can gather at the front and then um, yeah, the colleagues from NCSS will be helping us. Yeah. You can just move forward. Uh, can fit everybody, right? Can fit everybody.
Thank you. Yeah, let's thank our panelists. Yeah, thank you. Just look very simple, oh. just look over here and wave. Oh, okay. Go ahead, love. Really quick one. It's already rolling. So we just get it together. All right, let's wave. And uh, say thank you very, very much. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, right. let's thank our panelists. Thank you very much. And uh, thanks for participating as well. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.